In this video, you will learn how we have created the concrete wall for our 3D scene. Basically, here we have used the same method as for the stones, but we have to take care that it looks a little bit more handmade and that we have these nice looking fragments. And how we have done that, we show you right now. The idea for this concrete wall I used from our overpainting we did before. From this overpainting I also had the inspiration to create these steel beams. At first I add a plane for the ground, we will use this later. And then I take the basic cube, uh, yes I know usually one deletes the basic cube, but in this case I use this cube to block out the basic shape of this concrete wall. For that I simply duplicate the cube in edit mode and transformate it just so that it looks good to me. As already explained in the video where we have created the IV, add-ons are very useful. Especially in this case it would be extremely inconvenient to destroy the wall by hand. And because of that we enable the add-on self-fracture in the user preferences under add-ons. And using this add-on will destroy the wall easily. And so the add-on knows where to cut all the pieces. We have to define where the add-on should cut our object. And in our case we simply use the vertices of the mesh. But as you can see the object has way too less vertices. So we press W subdivide several times to subdivide the mesh and according to this subdivision we'll destroy the wall. Now I select the cubes and click here in the tool shelf on cell fracture. Then the cell fracture settings will pop up. Here in the point source settings, as already mentioned, we can define what should be used as source to create the cuts in the mesh. And here we use the own words. The source limit I set to 2000, then we have more fragments. The noise value I set to 1 so all the fragments don't look the same. The recursion value I set to 2 so every fragment will be subdivided once again. And so all the fragments are not the same size. I set the random value to 1 and click here on random. Yeah, After that I click on OK and then let the destruction take its course. On the first 3D layer you can see nothing has changed. And on the layer besides you can see all the fragments were added. Certainly we don't want to move all the different fragments by hand. And because of that we'll use a simple trick. Because we'll simulate a rigid body simulation. And then we'll convert this simulation to a static mesh. For doing that at first we select the ground. Under physics we click on rigid body. And under type we choose passive. That means the ground is something like a collision object, but using this passive option this will not move. Now using C I select all the fragments that should not move during this simulation. That means we select the lower part of the wall. And now I join all the selected parts using Ctrl J. After that under physics I also enable widget body under type passive. And so that all the moving parts of the simulation will correctly collide on the joint objects from the bottom, we have to change under rigid body collision the shape from convex hull to mesh. Using convex hull it creates a invisible low resolution collision mesh around our object. With this low resolution the calculation of the collision is much faster, but the disadvantage is that it ignores holes. That means if we had a ball, an object would not fall into it, but instead it would collide like there is an invisible lid on it. And because of that we'll use the mesh collision. That means every phase of the object will be used to calculate the collision. But in this case the calculation takes a little bit longer. So don't worry, we don't have to set up this collision settings for all of the different fragments. I just select one of it. Enable widget body under physics and the settings below we leave them as they are. Then I select all the fragments and I take care that this one where I've already added the widget body physics is selected as the last one so it's the active one. 
And then in the tool shelf under physics, I click on copy from active. That means all the settings we have done on the one fragment will be copied to all the other selected fragments. So if I now play the animation, you can see the simulation gets calculated. I really like this. And to convert it into a static mesh, we have to bake this simulation into a keyframe animation. For doing that, I select all the objects and then in the tool shelf under physics, I click on bake to keyframes. Here we can define the start and the end frame to define which part of the simulation should be baked into keyframes. Now we have a whole lot of keyframes in the timeline. Then I move the pointer in the timeline to a frame where I like the position of all the fragments. Then I switch to the dope sheet editor and simply delete all the keyframes. Down below some of the fragments are moved through the ground. We simply delete them. Now all the different fragments we don't need separately. So I select them all and join them using Ctrl J. That means now we have just one object for the wall. And that's very useful for our scene organization. Now all the edges of the concrete wall are way too sharp. And if you take a look at objects in real life, there are no such sharp edges. And especially the surface and the edges of broken concrete looks way more smooth. Yeah, and because of that, now we'll use a similar trick like for the stones. But instead of using the subdivision surface modifier, we'll use the remesh modifier that basically creates a completely new mesh using just quads for the complete object. And so we'll have better details in the end and then we'll project a cloud's texture from different angles onto the surface. Yeah, and because I already showed you this in the stone tutorial, I'll do it very quickly here. I start by adding the remesh modifier and increasing the octree depths to get a higher resolution. But as you can see, something is wrong with all the different edges of the object. And that's because the self fracture add-on automatically marked some of the edges as sharp that you can use for the edge split modifier. But in our case, this is not useful. And because of that, I press Ctrl V, clear sharp edges to delete all the sharp edges. And another thing that's not very useful for us is that all the faces are separately. That means you can select one face and move it around. But we need all the fragments as one part. So select everything, again press Ctrl V and select remove doubles. And so all the vertices which are lying on the same point are merged. Now we can control how big or small the cracks should be. And for that, in the header of the 3D view, I click on pivot point and choose individual origins. And now in edit mode, if we select everything and scale, you see all the different fragments were scaled individually. And the bigger you do them, the smaller the cracks will be. And the smaller you scale it, the bigger the cracks will be. Now I add the displace modifier as we know it from the stones. And important for the concrete wall is that you add a lot of black in the color ramp of the clouds texture we'll use for the displace modifier. On the texture we then have just a few white spots. And so we have just a few holes in the concrete. We don't exaggerate it with using the displace modifier, like for the stones. In this case we only copy it three times. For the directions I use X, Y and Z to project the texture from X, Y and Z on the surface. Yeah, and for choosing positive and negative strengths for the displace modifiers, you simply keep in mind from what perspective you will see this concrete wall and according to this perspective, you can choose positive or negative so that the holes are created correctly according to the view. Okay, after I've set up all the modifier settings, I increase the octree depths of the remesh modifier to 10. So we have a very high resolution. And voila, we are done with our concrete wall. The great thing is, using the modifiers we are very flexible. That means we always can reduce the resolution of the remesh modifier or disable it completely. So that we still can work smoothly in our 3D scene.
Yeah, the high resolution of this object is maybe not very useful for the rendering or for working in our 3D scene, but for creating the materials, this will help us a lot to achieve a very realistic result. That you'll learn in another video. If we now take a look at the concrete wall of the final scene, you can see we also added these ground plates. Basically, these are simple edited cubes. And then in edit mode, we cut these cubes using the knife tool. And then we simply used exactly the same modifier settings we used for the wall. Yeah, as final step, we modeled some steel beams and placed them into the concrete wall. You can see these are very simple objects. Yeah, and this easy, you can create a realistic looking concrete wall.